Welcome to a narc free new year where I am going to read you excerpts out of my book, Healing from Narcissistic Abuse. Recover from empathy deficient relationships and emotionally unavailable people. If you want the link to buy this book, I will have information at the very end of the video. So watch to the end or just look in the links down below. Let's get on with today's excerpt from the book. Chapter three, page 49 on faulty childhood programming. The word manipulation has a very negative connotation, but basically it's done because the person who is manipulating feels that they can't be upfront about their needs. So they go in roundabout ways to influence outcomes and results. Like I said before, one takes to get, that's the narcissist, whereas the other gives to get, that's the codependent, the empath. Manipulation tactics. This is all rooted in childhood programming where the belief is formed early in life. Hey, if I take a direct approach and really express my deep feelings and desires, that will get shot down. So the child learns to become like a chameleon, to drop hints and maybe even have emotional outbursts, either with anger or crying spells. Sometimes they use insincere flattery, give false promises or give guilt trips. Sometimes they will outright lie, self-sacrifice, or prefer performing favors or playing victim. They can act passive aggressive, seduce, and even issue threats. These are all forms of manipulation used because using the direct approach would risk rejection at some level. So this is a way to avoid that risk while making the desired outcome more probable. As I started getting more self-aware and avoiding these kind of tactics within myself, I became more clear about what I wanted emotionally. And let me tell you, this is the gift curse of the narcissist in your life. By not meeting your emotional needs, it becomes the pain point by which you become acutely aware of them. You may think, wow, I have this emotional need that is not being met. And as you start feeling the pain of that, you start getting clearer about how you feel and what you want, which is probably something that was trained out of you in childhood. And as a result, you start becoming more direct. Then what happens? Here's the downfall of being direct. Let me tell you, as I became more upfront and started getting more direct about my needs and asking for them to be met, some things happened that didn't go so well. For example, at one point in my relationship with one of my narcissistic parents, I said very sincerely, I wish we had a closer relationship. And you know what that parent said back to me? Sounds like that's your problem. I'm fine. I'm good. Remember, these are the, it's not my problem people. And I think that deep down, we know that. That's why we never really put ourselves out there directly in the first place. You might try to establish getting your needs met emotionally through people, but if you're attracting narcissists in your life, for whatever reason, you might find yourself in these direct conversations where you're trying to get the other person to empathize with your needs, feelings, and desires, but what they're proposing is not fulfilling you in some way. Now notice in all three of these examples I gave to you, I was asking for emotional closeness and intimacy. I was asking for empathy, but what I got in return was no empathy, no effort, ghosted. It's likely you've encountered situations like this and there's probably been a history of it, a long history, because when you were growing up, if you try to use this direct approach for expressing your needs or even daring to have them, you might have been shamed or guilted with feedback like, well, why do you want that? You don't need that. That's selfish. And then when you try to set boundaries or directly ask for these emotional needs to be met, that's when you dealt with a narcissist showing their true colors, maybe getting angry, accusing, and complaining. Or worse, fleeing from you and leaving you, leaving you feeling abandoned and rejected. During my unhealed years, I would have put my emotions out there in the way that I explained in my examples. I would have felt very abandoned and rejected. And this is because I was coming from a place of low self-worth, having feelings like, oh, I guess I'm not important again. And the experience brings me back to that messaging I've gotten all my life that I'm not important, I'm not special, I'm a nobody. Once I got healed from that, I came from a place of higher self-worth in my thinking good riddance. 
When you put yourself out there and you communicate your needs clearly and directly, but they are rejected or denied, you say to yourself, good riddance. Oh, thank you. You showed me your true colors and now I recognize you for who you are. And then you kick the dust off your feet and you move on. Now, I understand this is easier said than done, particularly if you are deeply involved with a narcissist right now, which I'll cover in the next chapter. But getting into the issue at hand of healing from the faulty childhood programming, of coming from a background of childhood emotional neglect, of having to heal attachment trauma that's created a longing for you to move out of this place of feeling like you're nobody into being a somebody, how do you bridge that gap? If you're interested in purchasing this book, Healing from Narcissistic Abuse, Recover from Empathy Deficient Relationships and Emotionally Unavailable People, remember it is on Kindle ebook version. You can get it on audiobook at Audible, and you can also get it in print at Amazon.com. And for those of you who like to sit back and watch and listen, well, I've got the video version over at my Etsy shop. Links for all of these are going to be found down below. And if you want to watch the next video available on narcissism, click here. Thank you all for your support.